Almighty God and King of Kings, as your subjects and your children, we give ourselves to you in service and devotion and love. We thank you that you not only rule in holiness and glory, which are never ending, but also that you chose to come and live among us. You gave us an example of humility and service in your kingdom. Thank you. And Lord, I ask that your Holy Spirit quicken us and that not only are we citizens of a kingdom, but that you, Father, are our King. You reign in glory in a never-ending kingdom. And we give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Well, if you've already turned to the gospel reading as reference for our sermon today, you're wrong. <laughs> I'll be preaching from all things the book of Daniel. So you may want to turn to that in your service leaflet and if you'd like to take notes to the back of your service leaflet as well. You know, every child I know who was raised in Sunday school knows lots of stories about Daniel. First of all, there was the story about Daniel and his friends refusing to eat the king's food that was sacrificed to idols. And then we have the story about Daniel being able to interpret the king's dreams. And then we have the story about Daniel's three friends being thrown into the fiery furnace because they refused to bow down to King Nebuchadnezzar. And then my childhood favorite, Daniel being thrown into the lion's den because he continued to pray to the God of heaven instead of to King Darius, and he didn't even become their dinner. Today's Old Testament reading from Daniel describes a part of the vision that God gave to Daniel. In addition to seeing four beasts arising from the sea, he also sees the Lord himself sitting on a throne in heaven. What Daniel saw troubled him greatly, and he says, the visions that passed through my mind disturbed me. What disturbed him so much? Well, if you read the entire chapter of Daniel 7, which I commend to you later today, it describes that the Lord showed Daniel four great world powers that were described as otherworldly beasts. First, there was a lion with wings like eagles. This represents the kingdom of Babylon, which is where the Israelites were exiled at the time. Next came a bear with three ribs in its mouth. This represents the Persian Empire. The third was a leopard with four wings and four heads. And we know this to be the four kingdoms that were later conquered by Alexander the Great. And finally, we see that fourth beast which represented Rome, which wasn't identified as an, an animal that we would see today or even imagine because it had iron teeth, it devout, devoured its victims, and it had ten horns. Now, for all of us, these kingdoms are part of the history that we've already studied. But, you see, Daniel was only familiar with Babylon. And most terrifying beast of all, Daniel saw the Lord seated on a throne in heaven. But even that doesn't adequately describe the next part of Daniel's vision. 
The very king of the universe took his seat on a fiery throne. He had thousands at his service and more than a million who sat in judgment. Daniel needed spiritual confirmation of what was going to happen in the physical world as a part of God's spiritual plan. And the vision led Daniel to an assurance, as it should for all of us, that God's kingdom will be everlasting and it will, it will never be destroyed. So what is the message for us? Well, the powers of this world are ferocious. They are evil and they are oppressive. The evil that weighs on us discourages us. It causes terrible things to happen to people and it weighs on us. But the powers of evil will not last forever. And that's what I get from verse 14. The dominion of God is one that will not pass away and will not be destroyed. In fact, Daniel 7.14 could almost be the end of the Lord's prayer in which we say, Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. That is our certainty in troubled times. Now, there's more than enough trouble to shake our certainty about where our country and this world is going. In a sermon that I preached in late September, I enumerated a number of social and cultural, political, governmental, military, economic, and health crises. I'll spare you the repetition and a rehearsal of that litany of our social and our political woes today. But the point is that what Daniel saw still applies. Daniel wrote, As I looked, thrones were set in place, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. This is God the Father. Ancient of days, on the eternal throne. And to that we say, thine is the kingdom. His clothing was as white as snow. His hair of his head was white like wool. His throne was flaming and its wheels were ablaze. We see in him pure whiteness and holy fire. And we say, Thine is the glory. Verse 10 says that a river was flowing, coming out from before him. But not just any river, a river of fire. Thousands upon thousands attended him. Ten thousands upon ten thousands stood before him. The court was seated and the books were opened. And all the angels are at his bidding when the fires of judgment begin to flow. It's time for judgment. And we say, thine is the power. Verse 11 says, I looked, then because of a sound of great words that the horn was speaking. And as I looked, the beast was killed and its body was destroyed and it was given over to be burned with fire. The Lord explains to Daniel that this horn is a different kind of king rising out of the old Roman Empire. And God explains that this king will speak against the Most High and against his saints. And that takes us to the future. Because on Judgment Day, that king will be slain and he will be thrown into the lake of fire. And who's presiding over all of this? It's not only God the Father, the Ancient of Days, seated upon a throne, but Daniel saw one more throne. He saw one sitting at the right hand of God the Father. Daniel wrote, 
In my vision at night, I looked, and there before me was one like a son of man coming with the clouds of heaven. Daniel sees Jesus, who has become like a son of man, and he prophetically sees him on the other side of his ascension, coming back into heaven's glory. He approached the Ancient of Days, and he was led into his presence, and he was given dominion and glory and a kingdom. All of that lines up exactly with what Jesus said in Matthew 28, 18. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. And it's the same message that Paul wrote in Philippians 2.10 in which he says, His dominion is everlasting and it will not pass away. His kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. So, as for the Father, we can also say of Jesus, For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. No matter how bad the world situation gets, that's our certainty in troubled times. And we know that as long as we're in this sinful world, there will be troubled times. You know, a generation ago, it was communism that was our threat to our security. Today, it's terrorism of all kinds, all kinds of radicalism, moral decay, distrust of even our own leaders. And we ask ourselves, what will be next? Daniel reminds us that all the powers of this world will rage, but they will all fail. And when the world situation seems totally hopeless, we have to remember the kingdom in which we reside is eternal. And that our king is a king over all dominions, and that eventually our king will sit in judgment. That's our certainty for the future. And it's also our confidence in living now. So when we get away from the sweep of world history and we start examining our little moments in time, in our own set of worries and troubles. There are times that you and I have our doubts as well. Our confidence wanes when we are in trouble, when we endure hardship or suffering, and things keep piling upon us as if there's never any relief. Even in this small corner that we call our church family, we see disease, we see suffering, we see sorrow, we see a multitude of problems on our own church prayer list. We're often like Daniel because we tend to focus or dwell on our problems. Although he had been given a vision of heaven itself, even though he could see that Jesus was ruling over all things, Daniel writes at the end of this chapter, here is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my thoughts greatly alarmed me. My color changed, but I kept the matter in my heart. If Daniel had ever thought that the hardest times for God's people were about to end, God revealed to him that the troubles were only going to get worse. It wasn't going to be easy. Now, even though we know and we hold fast to the fact that Jesus is in charge, there are times that our feelings are not quite in lockstep with the facts. 
We don't understand his ways. And frankly, sometimes we're like the psalmist in Psalm 49, 42.9 that says, I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Hmm. The psalmist that he calls his rock, then he acts like his rock is crumbled. Admit it. We've also felt like God has forgotten about us, even though we know in our heads that he hasn't. God's enemies love it when they realize that our confidence is waning. In that same psalm, we also read, my tears have been my food day and night while they say to me all day long, where is my God? Perhaps instead of asking Lord, where are you? Perhaps we should be asking, Lord, where am I? Lord, am I so tied up in this world and its pleasures that I can't bear it when life gets hard? Lord, have I become so materialistic that I don't appreciate your eternal gifts of forgiveness and salvation and the fact that I have a heavenly home And Lord, have I become so focused on my own hardships that I've forgotten how much Jesus suffered for me so that I could have salvation in the first place? Lord, have I become so self-centered that you have to rock my little boat and wake me up And show me what's important. What an encouragement to know that the king who is ruling over all things. And whose dominion is everlasting and will not pass away. Still loves us. Even when we mope and complain. And he still answers our prayers. And he forgives us. No matter how much we suffer, no matter how chaotic the world becomes, we know that Jesus rules as king and that Jesus watches over us with eyes of love and we say with confidence and with certainty, thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen.